So now we come to talking about Franz Baden and the art of memory. And the, the interesting thing about this is everything I'm going to describe is hidden in plain view and probably would be understandable by his contemporaries, the people who he wrote for in a different time. This is a memory wheel, a special device inspired by Raymond Lull, but developed by Giordano Bruno and others as a means for very deep contemplation to, so you can reach a high level of contraction. Uh, contraction being the state of samadhi. You rotate the wheel in your mind. And what you do is you join these different qualities. So let's imagine A was the idea that if you sat in meditation um, on something, you'd get the blessing. Let's imagine the second A is the idea that your senses are naturally con controllable. You can decide how much you see by closing your eyes. You can turn, your, you, can, you can perform fatihara. You would combine these two in your meditation. I can sit below a shadow, but I can, I can absorb as much as I like. Or it could be a, another principle. There are versions of this that are combining. What would it be like if there was fire was combined with a zodiac sign, or if the the moon shone down in a watery way? There's there's different ones for different elements to co combine, contemplate different concepts. Some of them are very abstract. You know, what if truth and justice were joined together? What what if love and honour were together? This kind of thing, and the idea is to lead you to a state of contraction. Other times it's used for getting close to something, close to something. Imagine if there was a, a figure in the centre that represented something that you really needed to touch on. Let's imagine you wanted to contemplate forgiveness. And each one of these letters represents an aspect of that forgiveness. Because your mind's changing, but you're connected with that vibration, you can get very, very deep on one subject. Imagine this, you, you sit and you think about forgiveness and then you move to the letter A. You've got the feeling of forgiveness. A is you, forgive yourself. And then you move to the letter B. B, uh, forgive those closest to you. Maybe you forgive your partner. C, forgive your family. D, forgive strangers. E, forgive your enemies. F, uh, forgive the forces of nature. And you could carry on going through forgiveness. So it's completely comprehensive. You've forgiven God for anything you think it might have gone wrong or the laws of nature or time or whatever. You forgive everything. You just wipe your slate clean. Can you see how, even for someone who's not very experience of meditation, you could get really deep there because the change of subject is triggers you, okay? This is Franz Baden's third tarot card. Have I got your attention? <laughs> it also rotates and the positioning that it starts off with does not have uh, a meaning. It's not, it's not the natural layout of these. If we go back into earlier times, when people wrote books, there were more signposts than instructions. You read some of these early texts on um, hermetic subjects, and they hint at things, and they expect you to grab it and run with it. And in fact, there's even an idea, an ancient idea, that if, you, if it's not you grabbing and running with it, it's not worth much. If you have spell it out to the person, it's the searching and revealing that is a really important thing. One of the things they used to do, which is really interesting, is at the front of books, they would put a epitome, a picture which was made to be memorised and understood, a picture that summarised of that book, but also in the mystical things, 
gave you the key to it, the real truth behind what they're publishing. And from, you know, a hieroglyphic monad in the front of a title or a depiction of a, uh, a myth, these would often be mysterious and, and clever. Within other traditions, traditions we know Franz Baden was intrigued by, there are other pictures which are used for contemplation as a meditation. Within Freemasonry, they have three tracing boards. Some degrees afterwards, you know, have started to do the same as well. But these three tracing boards are pictures that you memorize and then you have a little bit to say about everything that's there. So you can list the seven virtues and imagine them in their right positions. You can go through the mysteries of each one and describe what that virtue is. It, it, it puts it in your mind. It comes from a time where it was believed that what you memorised became you. But there are other texts which are far more mystical than this. Uh, Daniel Kramer <coughs> produced a, a wonderful book in uh, the uh, late 1600s, which it's got 40 different pictures relating to the heart. And you meditate on each one, it takes you through a process. One text which you might find interesting is the Giraheim Figurin, the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians. That's the pictures that I've been showing you. Now, here's where it gets really exciting, really exciting. Franz Baden was teaching his students using this text. We know that from their diaries and we know that from uh, the accounts of the time. We know he had multiple copies and we also know he was trying to find a complete copy. <coughs> a complete copy that there's only two now in existence. One is in the library of the Society's Rosicrucian in Anglia, uh, which is under, I'm the librarian, I'm on my guardianship. And another one is in the uh, Hermetic Museum in Amsterdam. And they're slightly different, but they're the only complete ones. Baden didn't ever find a complete one. Important thing, Baden didn't need a complete one. <laughs> he didn't need it. What do you do? What do you do with these symbols? Use them for meditation. Use them for meditation. You become at one with each one of these principles. What's the routine? You get the picture. You learn to visualise it, you learn to paint it in your mind first. That's actually quite a hard step, and that's kind of a, a quite a big thing. Yeah? And then you, there's normally a bit of text to memorise as you do it, so you would recite those. And your mind doesn't get a chance to relax because you move from one to another. And normally, there's actually a hidden process, a process you're going to take yourself through, which is quite powerful. Many people who love Franz Baden's teachings get caught in other directions. And that's not to say you, you can't study other things that might be useful, you know, maybe the Yoga Sutras or something. But we need to keep our focus on that manual. That's what we're doing. The reason why we're excited by Franz Baden is because it's just doing it. It's just straight. It's what we're after. Yeah. It's what we're going to the, the, the magical path of walking. Isn't it surprising then that people sometimes you talk to them and they haven't really read it recently or gone through them? They, sometimes they don't own the whole books and everything. Maybe they are, they're they're missing out a little bit. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to get a bit of enthusiasm to encourage that. Yeah. But also we've got these tarot cards at the front, haven't we? These tarot cards, they're just there. By modern standards, it's a bit of a strange thing, just having this picture there, which is all symbolic, and it, it, it contains everything that we're going to be doing in that course. I've actually just printed out the description here. I've got a couple, if, if anyone wants to you can pass them out if someone hasn't got initiation in front of them. It's all, it's all something I'm sure you're aware of. Now, Baden 
doesn't overtly state what they're actually for, why he's put them in there in initiation thematics. But in PME, and even more so in Kitu Kabbalah, he says, this is here for your contemplation. Um, in the Kitu Kabbalah, it says, the practicing magician will be able to receive all the analogies and comparisons he needs from this, or always that effect. So they're, they're, they're there to be used. But who uses them? Nobody. Apart from us. Apart from us, because we, we listen. <laughs> yeah. So, here's where it gets exciting. These figures are, in my belief, inspired by some in the Gira Hem figure in the secret symbols. If you have a little a look, you'll be able to see that all three tarot cards are there in some subtle form. So, in the pictures that we've been handing around, pictures that have been shared, you will see one which is showing the three kingdoms, the animal, vegetable, and mineral kingdom, representing as salt, sulfur, and mercury. That's the one. On the same picture, you'll also see the four elements represented above, as they are also represented above here. <laughs> and here we've got four elements, one, two, three. So again, so you'll see the same in, on, on the picture. Now, at this point, I do want to mention that the lotus symbol is missing. It does appear other places. And I want to remind everyone in the group that we are called Shen after this lotus symbol. So this lotus symbol, um, above the magician's head, with an invisible ribbon for a crown, there is a gold-edged, silvery-white lotus flower as a sign of the divinity. This is the divinity in yourself. In the inside, there is a, a ruby-red philosopher's stone symbolizing the quintessence of the whole hermetic science. So this, mm -hmm. this lotus, this gold and silver lotus, this, um, you could say, an electrum a lotus, it's, it's alchemical drawing. This is the goal of the hermetic practice. The, it's got the, the stone of immortality in there. Uh, Ome Padme Hum. This is the, mm -hmm. the stones in the lotus, the drawing of the lotus. If you're familiar with the second tarot card, um, which is uh, of a practitioner performing evocation. Uh, give Kitty a few moments and you'll be able to see this. This second tarot card, I believe, is showing mastery, not only the four elements, but mastery. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the picture we'll be looking at in a second. It's showing mastery over the planets as a very interesting symbolism. It has one figure standing, one figure sitting. And it has the seven planets represented. The second tarot card in Practice of Magic Evocation is also, in my opinion, inspired by a figure in the secret symbols. That's the one. I think most people can probably remember it. The, so the, the key ingredients, one person standing, one person sitting, representing yin and yang, up and down, electric and magnetic. Uh, I'm almost tempted to talk in yogic terms, but let's, let's keep focused. Yeah, could it, sorry to interrupt you, could it also be the, the holy guardian angel sitting with the magician? Ah, I like it. Yes, of course it'd be. And the control over the planets being another essential theme. 
And then we come to the third tarot card. Oh. Yes, here we have the comparison. Superb. And then we come to the third tarot card, which is, of course, this wheel, which has the elements on it, it has the planets, it has the zodiac, and the ten sifiroth all on the outside. This is also in the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians in a form. It's a slightly different diagram, but you can see this is directly drawn from there. That one. So that's the one. You can see these are together. Now, here's what's very interesting. So, both sets of symbols or both illustrations come with a picture and a list of words for you to memorize or contemplate next to them in the secret symbols and in Franz Baden. Franz Baden's contemporaries, people reading the Baden's books, did know about secret symbols. They'd know about other uh, works. What, what do you do then? How did they work the original secret symbols? Well, I can tell you directly. You know, as a, a practitioner with this, who's close to this text and close to that tradition, what you would do is you'd use them as a guided meditation. That's actually what you do, but in your own memory. So the forces that you see depicted, you are trying to walk the ladder towards through contemplation. So you would memorize, so in the case of the, the tarot card, you'd muse. Some of your prior age. Yes, you'd, I like it, yes. You're doing Samadhi, Samadhi on initiate hermetics. Yeah. Um, Malik has the best smile. You two have the best smile. His, his wisdom. His wisdom about communication. So I communicate his wisdom. <laughs> 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 That's right. We need to see. This is one. Yeah, other, other qualities as well. Continuity in communication yeah, and all this stuff. It's all working together. So what you would do is you'd start with these, which are probably the lowest of the influences you could imagine and you'd, you'd really contemplate that you'd really contemplate all these elements that sort of are listed and you'd be thinking about them expressed in the material world and you'd be at one with them and you'd be one with them and some of this imagination would be quite interesting for different people imagine yourself as that sort of positive masculine or that uh, that negative feminine position really getting through that, but memorizing the words, memorizing the picture, working through it. And you start working up above the material and you'd start working through meditating on the, uh, the different elements. We've got some descriptions here, but a traditional practitioner would start elaborating. They get a bit excited after a while and they'd start memorizing the qualities of everything, what corresponds to what what the qualities of it, because they're, they're imagining themselves being it. And you'd work up in your contemplation all the way up. And then we have our, our Om in the Akasha. Yes, uh, at, at, at the top. And we've got the, um, the figures here representing creation in eternal proper propagation here. So that's the exercise that would probably be a group exercise at the time when Baden was running his circles, but it would most certainly be something that would be being contemplated. Now, this isn't a nightly thing. You wouldn't be doing this as part of your routine. This would be spare time, kind of, let's muse on this, let's do this. And that's a really interesting thing as well. If you look at these practitioners at the time, this is their, they're far more 
excited about the exercises and you get the feel from many modern practitioners in their spare time they're itching to get to it get back to it get out let's have a go can i can i get there can i touch on this can i become the sun and the moon i've I've been working on this for a while i can do the male and female down on this level i haven't got the male and female on this level yeah i'm working on that i can't quite feel it can't quite imagine it i can't quite picture it this would be seen as something that would raise your vibrations and it would burn away some of the blockages you'd have. This would be something very exciting to do, given there as a kind of gift. Uh, having a, it'd be like a, a multimedia guided message from someone. You've got the words and the pictures. What would you do with the second one? Well, exactly the same. Now, you're going to be imagining some rather far out things. You're going to be stretching your imagination to do this. So you might not be able to do it immediately. So I'm imagining the mineral kingdom. I'm being the mineral kingdom. I'm knowing what that represents in alchemy. And I'm moving on to the, you know, this is, this is quite an interesting guided um, imagination. And this is something we, if we have time in this retreat. Maybe we can have a go at, but let's not delay on this too long here. Ah. Uh, our final tarot card. So we've done the main focus, which is about the elements. You've gone through the planetary one, which would be evocation, almost evoking those planets and walking up the ladder. It's a big imagination that. Finally, you've got a combination wheel. And this would probably be to do with the mysteries of those letters. So if we look in the book, there are letters that correspond with these underlying qualities. And isn't it interesting, the idea of combining and spelling? Now, I'm not there yet, but I'm intrigued to know if we take the position that Barden starts it in and we start to spell using them, so we look up, What's the letter there for, for fire? What's the letter there for Saturn? What's the letter there for... And we put them together. What formulas has he set them on? The key to the true Kabbalah, for anyone who hasn't read there or isn't refreshed with it, is about learning to say a cosmic letter. And that's a big experience, a big experience, one of the letters that created everything. And then, if you work up, you can do two of them at a time. And if you work up, you could do three. It doesn't go as far as three in writing. It does in the picture. Yes. So then eventually you can do all four. What is it saying? What would happen if you started rotating, if you went through it? If you started at the beginning position in the book, you said those letters and then you turned it one and you said those letters and you turned it one. This is a incantation that's been left for us. What would it do? That'll be the next retreat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've talked about Franz Baden, Art and Memory, and I've given you some hints of things that we can work on in the future. Let's talk about our immediate goal and memory art. How would we use memory for our own meditation practice? or for magical practices. Barden does actually give us a little bit of this. It's quite interesting. Repeating is uh, the, or in form, I think he even used the term japa as a, as a thing, is an art of making something happen by repetition. Um, I can't remember the actual number, but he says this, it's over 300 and something something times. He says, if you do a magical ritual, that over, I think it's 375 or something, if you look it up times, it will cause a physical effect. That's what he's saying, that's one of the things he says. Repetition of a routine and dividing things into memorable sections is a powerful technique if you need it. So let's imagine you've got a quality you've been trying to work on for a very long time and you're breathing, you've been trying to do the, the poor breathing for it, but it's really hard to keep the focus on there for 30 minutes, like Barton recommends. 
and, and it's hard to keep the enthusiasm for 30 minutes. One method you could use, and you could use a memory wheel or memory palace or a story, is to start turning that contemplation into distinct stages. So you could mark every, say, 20 breaths, and you could start doing a, an aspect of that thing you are breathing for. So give me one of the four cardinal Baden virtues. Success. Health. Okay, success and health. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do health. It's very, very easy. Very, very easy. Okay. So you could say, right, I'm breathing in health. I'm healthy in every way. I'm breathing in health. I'm healthy in every way. You want to get a bit of momentum. I breathe in health and it improves my senses, my sense, my eyesight. I breathe in health and improves my hearing. I breathe in sen um, <laughs> health and it's, it improves my sensation. I can feel the organs associated. My eyes are made bright. With each breath, you keep focusing on this. Um, as I breathe in, after 10 repetitions, maybe you can start to move. I breathe in and it feeds my muscles and so on, breathe in and I'm strong, your bones, you can start going through there. Now you want to keep a broad vision of health. So the, the sub-focus is in the big focus, okay? But you're imagining, you're picturing clearly the way this would manifest. You know, your skin looking young, your, your hair doing well, your the eyes bright, you do some, you do your mental health, you do aspects of your emotional health, you do everything, and you do 10, maybe 20 of each. You do that, and I tell you, you'll be, you'll be able to sit for an hour, not, not, not half an hour. Uh, this memory wheel, you've probably all heard the story of me in this memory wheel. Um, help me, because I'm not very good with time. How long was the nightly training to get the... The nightly training? To get to be able to do it. She's, she's, she's uh, when you started or <laughs> when you were building well, up to doing the actual demonstration? By the end you were doing two hours, an hour of actually doing Also, I mean in, the, in months, how many times was it nightly? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it took a lot, it took a lot, so... Start, you, I reckon you started almost, it, like, building it almost a year, I'd say, because you sort of started maybe. learning the letters and... Yeah, so sing them and memorizing them. So Bruno wants you to build momentum. Yes, yeah, thank sorry. you. No, sorry, no. <laughs> so Bruno wants you to memorize a philosophical concept for every single one of them. H H is the uh, different uh, forms of the uh, of causes in Aristotelian philosophy, that kind of thing. And some of them are a memory palace in themselves. Because you spent a week sometimes so, on one letter. Yeah, so Psi is the Neoplatonic <laughs> system of ascent with two added in. <laughs> but yeah, for some reason, Bruno added in. When we came to actually do it, I thought, right, let's do that. Yeah, the sitting time was, was it seven and a half hours? hours? Yeah. Seven and a half hours. But it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad because you were going into a state of contraction on one thing and then you'd calm down a bit and you'd speak. So it was sitting in ecstasy of some form for seven hours. How um, were you after that? The next day was a bit funny. <laughs> next day I was a I think it's difficult you being back, sort of. Yeah, so it was, and I had what they call repercussions. Mm -hmm. So I'd be going along and I'd remember something, I'd remember, and some of the things you're meditating on, you know, pure joy or uh, pure life and that kind of thing, they're quite big. And so I was a little overwhelmed for the next few days. Wasn't it so Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it psalmody on each of the ones you were focusing on? Because it, yeah, it so builds the aim up is, until yeah, you get so to the centre and that's I think, bam. I think the idea was to have letter. contraction on everything <laughs> and then you combine them. For me, it actually took a few letters for those contractions to start. Uh, and then sometimes the one where it didn't quite happen. But there was enough of it. It was so big and so varied. Um, yeah, so it's a big thing. Imagine... This. So it is Barden saying, I want you to have oneness with fire. 
And I want you to have oneness with the fire of Mars. I want you to have oneness with the fire of the sun. Oneness with the fire of Venus. Oneness with the fire of Mercury. Mm. That, that's probably the, the scale of walking, walking, walking. Mm. And then in the centre of oneness. Um, so for our practical matters, this is really, really strong and it allows you to kick above your, your weight um, with, in many of our bargain exercises if we're willing to use it. It means that if you want to do contemplation on something, you can do two hours. You can go, okay. And it's a bit, you know, I do kind of teach this a little bit. I do say to people in contemplation, beginning of your contemplation, plan it out. So you think, I'm going to be contemplating gravity. I'm going to start by defining gravity. I'm going to think about examples of gravity. I'm going to think there's a little bit of planning out at the beginning. Okay. So this kind of that, but what if you took it to that next level? What if um, you ain't going to impregnate a room and you said, right, this is going to be a temple. The first 20 breaths are going to be on, let's say you were, building it for, su for success, you say first 20 breaths are going to be the, about the right attitude for success for everyone ever goes in it. The next 20 is going to be the right awareness that leads to seeing how success could form. The next 20 needs carried on and you, and you do everything, the right posture, the right understanding, the right influence, the right friends, the right thing, the sex, success on every level. You could, and you put together a memory wheel like this and then you, can, you could even combine them. I mean, that would be going somewhere very, very serious. This can lead you to contraction or your samadhi on something uh, a lot more easily. Imagine if you had a guide with your meditations with someone saying, okay, well, you're meditating on wisdom. Okay, wisdom, wisdom. Let's think about the base of wisdom, let's think about animal instinct. First, the wisdom that comes with this to begin with. The wisdom that comes with this to begin with. Give me examples of animals. You think that could hold on that for about 10 minutes, couldn't you? Say, so, right, now think about learnt wisdom, learnt wisdom, observation. What are the first observations we ever have? First observations. You, this is what this does. So by the time you get halfway through, you start to hit into these very high states. Now, what the problem comes, of course, when we're trying to move to Samadhi without, without seed. Well, what happens if you've done this enough? You've made a, a good samskara, which is taking mm -hmm. the place of your other ones that can benefit you. The yoga sutras even do hint you can do it by memory, but they, they probably mean imagination. Yoga techniques often use nested images. There's things like tap with shooty and things like that, where they say, imagine this, then imagine that. Imagine this and imagine that. Uh, the chakras are a good example. The chakras are actual temples that you imagine. It's got a deity in it. It's got steps. It's got symbolic things that are being held. You go up those temples. So for our, our Barden exercises, we can have this as a secret technique. Now, we don't want to rely on it. We want to be able to lift the weight on our own. We want to be able to do 10 minutes of disconcentration without subdividing we want to be able to do the loading of the room or the blessing of the talisman, but it's when we need to move something into a real powerful state. If you need to make a talisman and that is going to work, you know, so for some of you which are on the elements or vital force, or when you need to invoke the elements and breathe them in or something like that, the memory subdivided, and if it, it can be a story, so you've got a nice story. This is a very traditional magical technique, which gives you the different areas of covering. Or it can be a memory wheel. Uh, I've got some memory wheels we'll cut out and we can have a go with in a, in a while. Or it can be a memory palace, a building, a journey where you go past each and every thing. And you do that, and that talisman is going to be on a different level. Because instead of having... You know, maximum of half an hour of pure focus on there, then you, you could have half an hour pure focus for that first part. You could, you could do your seven hours like me on it. You could do that every day, you know, um, or do an hour every day. Wow. And it has all the layers. And think of the guidance system. 
think the guidance and when you're just breathing and you're floating around saying, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, imagine pure health. Some of those suggestions that my eyesight will be perfect, my habits will be healthy. You might touch some of those, but not with such comprehensive beauty. Now, here's the punchline. All these states we're talking about, when you perform a magical act, it's not just about you. You need to take the magical item through those. The room goes through those. The thing you're influencing. Concentration. You've charged that talisman in that room enough that it's starty-stoppy, starty-stoppy, starty fade away. Meditation. You've charged that room so the energy continues naturally. Yeah? It starts to have that effect. Where are we going to get it to? We need to take it to the next level. That's proper magic. When BAM! Samadhi, you've, you've, the energy is condensed enough that if it was in you, you'd go into Samadhi, but no, in that room it's on there, it starts to amplify on its own. It's, it's, it's got taken on its own energy. What you say is going to happen. That's the secret. Uh, imagine, no, of course, imagine where, if you were to take the charge through these stages, where that would get. So that concludes Franz Baden and the Art of Memory. Mark, do you have <laughs>